but we know that they can be addressed by individual action and restraint. So Governor Jay Inslee is limiting social gatherings in Washington today. He is also putting restrictions on live entertainment and warning of more possible rollbacks. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here tonight for Crimpton News at 6. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Breaking news this afternoon. Governor Inslee cracking down on social gatherings. Today, he announced added limitations to how many people can gather socially. He's also putting restrictions on live entertainment. Crimpton's Amanda Rowley explains what these new restrictions are. Starting Monday, counties in phase two will continue to only be allowed to have social gatherings of five people outside of your family. Spokane County is currently in this phase, but the big change today applies to counties in phase three. Those counties will now be limited to no more than 10 people outside of your family, whereas before in phase three, you could gather with 50 people. The mandate also prohibits all live entertainment, indoor and outdoor. If individuals, each of us, do not adhere to mask wearing, do not adhere to social distancing, do not adhere to these limitations on gatherings, today's rollbacks may be a forerunner to additional rollbacks. And we cannot rule out the potential for another stay home order this year, and perhaps not in the too distant future. So how individuals respond to this crisis will determine what happens to all of us combined. Governor Inslee says this mandate is the result of seeing the coronavirus most commonly spread at social gatherings. According to the governor, birthdays and barbecues are now a matter of life and death. Having a picnic with too many people that violates this order is now a danger. Dining in a restaurant with too many people in dangerous circumstances can now become a danger. Birthday parties where people have become infected at innocent things like a birthday party. He points to the significant daily increase in hospitalizations and deaths in Washington state. This might be a surprise to many of us who had the sense that after we were over the original hump, uh, we would be in safe territory. Unfortunately, that is not the case. The governor's office says there is no timeline on this mandate. More restrictions are possible depending on the spread of the virus. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. Meantime, North Idaho is reporting 107 new coronavirus cases today. This is the biggest single day increase the Panhandle has had since the start of the pandemic. Kootenai County is reporting the most cases of 904. The Panhandle Health District not reporting any new deaths and nearly 74% of coronavirus cases in North Idaho have been reported in people under the age of 50. Spokane County is reporting another 95 new coronavirus cases. The Spokane Regional Health District is also reporting another death. The total number of deaths due to the coronavirus now sits at 43. The Spokane County Health Officer says it's only a matter of time before the county sees an uptick in coronavirus related deaths. The Post Falls Vehicle Licensing Office is closed this afternoon after an employee there tested positive for COVID-19. Authorities in Kootenai County formally announced that just hours ago. Authorities say an asymptomatic employee worked at the office all of last week. Krem 2's Taylor Bido brings us the latest now. The signs outside the vehicle licensing office didn't provide any specifics, but still got the message across. The usually busy building in Post Falls was closed due to coronavirus. It wouldn't be until late Thursday afternoon when authorities announced that an employee working here had tested positive for the virus. In a statement, the Kootenai County Assessor's Office said that an asymptomatic employee worked here Monday through Friday of last week. As a result, anyone who came to the licensing office during that time or this week was asked to contact their doctor. The announcement comes amid spiking coronavirus cases in North Idaho and long waits for testing. While the office was closed, people with appointments here were rerouted to Coeur d'Alene without notice, but many were caught off guard. And it's just, just kind of it's just stupid, dude. I'm just trying to register my vehicle. I don't know why I have to be closed right now. Tayson Atwood was in good company. Authorities note that county licensing offices are often very busy due to the area's growing population. Boats and four-wheelers need to be registered here too. I have to drive all the way to Coeur d'Alene in 15 minutes to make my appointment. And that's just what he did. The county didn't specify how long the vehicle licensing office in Post Falls would be closed. The driver's license office remained open though. 
In Post Falls, Taylor Vito, Grand 2 News. The Central Valley School District released its plan for schools this fall. It will include in-person and virtual options. Krem 2's Morgan Trow has reaction from local families now. There was crying, screaming, fighting. You may think mom of four Megan Cunningham is trying to take her kids to the dentist, but she's actually talking about virtual learning thought it was going to be glorious and it was everything but glorious. I couldn't get all of them online at the same time. Some of the online sites were working, some of them weren't. I didn't have enough data, so I had to pay for more data to cover all of them. Her neighbor, Danielle Ramos, has six children and is a full time student. They are both parents in the Central Valley School District. It was very, very difficult when the school shut down. Um, I was doing 15 hours of online Zoom a week myself, plus trying to help my children and have a five-year-old and a three-year-old running around. The city school district has not yet announced what they're planning to do for social distancing guidelines, but this mom knows what she will not do. Masks are a huge thing with us. We don't agree to wear them. It's gonna be a huge struggle within itself masks and then trying to learn on top of that. State guidelines require face coverings for students and staff. Each district is factoring this in with parent feedback to come up with its own plan. Morgan Trow, Krem 2 News. As schools around the area are releasing their reopening plans for the fall, private schools are thinking about both social distancing and financial aid. Gonzaga Prep's president says he's making sure his students are able to attend. Already 60% of our students rely on financial assistance in order to ensure the affordability of tuition. He also says more financial aid is being given out in preparation for this year. Every student enrolled in the private school will be returning in the fall. He's not sure what that will look like yet, but he knows he's going to keep his students and his faculty safe, he said. And for more information on heading back to school in the fall, just text the word schools to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you a link with the latest information. Whitney. All right, Mark, thanks very much. Let's check in with Thomas Patrick in for Tom Sherry this evening. Thomas, it sounds like we are set for quite a warm up. It's already warm right now, but it's just going to get warmer, right? Oh, yeah. Next week is going to be easily a scorcher for us because here's the thing. We've been still watching for that first 90 degree day of the year. Still haven't hit it next. Next week, every single day may not just be in the 90s, but perhaps mid 90s and hundreds for some. Feels nice with a bit of a breeze out here in the outdoor weather center, if I do say so myself. It was up to 89 today in Spokane, but plenty of uh, 90 degree heat off in central Washington. And that's the thing. The winds have been close to about 20 miles per hour or so throughout the day today. So little bit of a breeze to help with the warm weather, but it also does mean an elevated fire risk for parts of central Washington where it does end up being a little bit hotter and a little bit drier overall, but the winds not getting out of control today. The humidity not as low as we've seen it recently, but elevated fire danger as opposed to say high or critical not under a red flag warning and the winds ease up heading into the weekend, but the heat ramps up heading into next week. It is looking very much like a scorcher. True uh, dog days of summer like heat coming next week. So not just hitting 90 degrees, but how hot can we get it throughout the course of next week? We'll look at that coming up in just a few minutes. Whitney. All right, Thomas, thank you so much. We'll definitely brace for it. In other big headlines tonight, a former Ferris High School coach was sentenced to 22 and a half years behind bars. We're talking about Charles Eglett, who pleaded guilty to charges of child pornography and enticement of a minor. Eglett pleaded guilty as part of a plea deal after allegations that he had forced a 15 year old girl to have sex with him at Northern Quest Casino back in 2018. Now, according to search warrants, Eglett used Snapchat also to talk to other minors. As part of his sentencing agreement, he will be supervised for life with conditions even after his release. He also will not be able to communicate with any of the victims or any child under the age of 18 without approval, and he will have to register as a sex offender. The Idaho mom whose children were found buried in her husband's yard has now pleaded not guilty to all charges against her. Lori Vallow is facing multiple criminal charges, including conspiracy to destroy or conceal evidence. The bodies of her kids, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, were both found buried last month on Chad Daybell's property. Neither one, Vallow nor Daybell, have actually been formally charged with killing the children. Vallow will be back in court tomorrow for a pretrial hearing. 
Still to come tonight, a multi-million dollar government contract is certainly under some scrutiny tonight. The DOD says it's to acquire COVID-19 vaccines, but online claims seem to suggest those syringes have RFID trackers in them. So our Verify team is going to investigate. And before we head to break, we just love giving these summer shout outs here at Creme 2. So tonight we want to give one to Mike Novakovich. There it is. Uh, he sent us this beautiful sunset picture of Steptoe Butte. Isn't it just gorgeous out there? I love the Palouse. If you want to get a summer shout out, just text the word summer to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you the link. We'll be right back.